So, uh, hello again, Disobey. Um, I'm going to talk, you, talk to you about uh, securing ACME DNS validation, or actually the title is Securing the Automation of ACME DNS Validation. I'm really bad with short titles. So, uh, my name is Jona Hoikkala. Uh, I have been doing backend development and uh, system admi administration tasks for a long time. And uh, currently, I'm working at uh, Electronic Frontier Foundation in the uh, project called Certbot, which is uh, Let's Encrypt clients. So, to the actual content. I'm sorry, but I will have to go through some of the context here first to bring everybody up to speed um, with all the things I'm going to talk about or how they relate to backend technologies. So first of all, uh, there is a CA called Let's Encrypt. Most of you probably know it or use it, hopefully. And uh, there's a protocol called ACME, Automated Certificate Management Environment. And uh, ACME protocol is how Let's Encrypt communicates with the client. So first, about the ACME. There are three challenge types. And challenge is when the CA requests the, uh, or makes the client to uh, validate its ownership over the domain using a ch uh, challenge. So there are three types of challenges. Uh, HTTP, which pretty much requires the client to uh, plant a distinct uh, challenge uh, validation token to a uh, uh, place in the web root of the domain, which the CA will then uh, proceed to fetch. And if it's correct, the certif certificate can be issued. Uh, the next one, there is a challenge type called TLS SNI where the um, SNI stands for uh, server name indication. And uh, that's how uh, host name is defined in the HTTPS requests, which are um, otherwise encrypted. Except this Wednesday, uh, Franz Rosen actually uh, found a vulnerability in large uh, shared host hosting and or cloud providers, which essentially meant that um, those providers' software actually uh, allowed non-privileged user to pretty much hijack or claim ownership over any domain uh, in that uh, cloud hosting infrastructure. And that uh, meant that TLS SNI uh, validation works in a way that uh, the CA will, will give you a challenge token, which you will have to include in the uh, uh, so server alternative na name extension of the certificate, which is pretty much uh, all the additional domain names uh, in addition to the uh, common name uh, that the certificate should be valid for. And the ch challenge token will be placed there. And the CA will proceed uh, on requesting the certificate from the HTTPD over HTTPS and uh, expects the uh, certificate to include the actual validation token. So these vulnerabilities in the shared hosting providers actually meant that every, anybody who could claim over ownership over uh, domain, or uh, at least the H HTTPS ownership of the domain, uh, was able to also get a valid certificate for it. This uh, vulnerability, it's, it does not exist in the uh, Let's Encrypt CA itself, nor the ACME uh, protocol but in the implementation of the hosting provider server software. However, the issue was so widely spread that to protect the in integrity of the web PKI, 
the CLS SNI challenge had to be disabled temporarily. So while it was uh, disabled, the guys at Let's Encrypt uh, proceeded to uh, research how widespread this issue actually is. And uh, it looks that it's so widespread that it's not feasible to actually maintain any kind of uh, blacklisting methods to just block some of the uh, TLS SNI requests out. So TLS SNI uh, is now uh, announced dead. So like I was saying, uh, ACME has two challenge types <laughs> supported by Let's Encrypt. So the last one I didn't go through yet uh, is the DNS challenge. And uh, how that works is that uh, CA will request yet again uh, with a challenge token that the client will plan it uh, to the DNS zone in a TXT record with a kind of magic subdomain, underscore ACME dash challenge uh, dot your domain dot TLD. And the CA will then proceed to uh, make a DNS request for it and uh, validate the uh, ownership of the domain that way. So, um, next up, uh, wildcard certificates. These will be made available by Let's Encrypt uh, in a month and a half, 27th of February this year. And um, they will be only available through uh, DNS challenge. Because the, obviously the HTTP challenge is not uh, like a, it's not enough to prove ownership over all the subdomains. So DNS is pretty much the only, only way for the CA to be sure that you actually control uh, the whole domain or the, all the, all the subnames of the domain. And this will be shipped with uh, uh, deployment of ACME versus, uh, version 2 um, along with uh, other modifications and additions of uh, new challenge uh, or modified challenge types. However, TLS SNI 02 won't be available either. So that challenge is gone. Uh, wildcard certificates, if you prefer security through obscurity, they, are, they will be the only way to hide your actual uh, subdomain name after April, uh, after April this year uh, because uh, of the uh, requirement of uh, posting the certificates to certificate transparency logs. Uh, so at least Google will stop trusting certificates issued after April this year uh, that uh, the CA has not posted to the CT logs. And that pretty much means that uh, all the uh, basic domain validated certificates you request after that, regardless of the CA uh, that issued them, will be uh, like open knowledge. So uh, certificate transparency logs. Um, pretty much has the all, all the information available because it includes the actual uh, uh, X509 certificates. Uh, there are multiple different logs, uh, and uh, CAs might post to one or multiple logs. Most of them post to multiple logs. And uh, these are managed by uh, companies like Google, Cloudflare. Uh, some CAs have their own. And it's a Merkle hash tree. So it has the like a uh, proof of consistency uh, in that name, uh, in that way, and uh, yeah, it actually has all the SNI names. So pretty much every domain you request a certificate will be uh, available for digs. And next up, uh, DNS. There's lots into DNS, <laughs> just like we saw with the uh, talk by uh, Mikko Kentema and uh, Mr. Herrala. Um, but this talk focuses on 
small subset of the um, features. Uh, TXT records mostly, uh, NS records and CNAME records. And this important controls the whole domain identity really means that so it's the most uh, valuable like uh, uh, credentials you have in your um, domain in, uh, infrastructure. And also it, it, it does not o only control the um, like a, a do domain identities but also the personal digital identities because you can control the delivery of email uh, through that and as we know email is used as um, proof of identity or uh, login as a login uh, in pretty much everywhere currently. So why should or why should or uh, you consider using DNS uh, challenge instead of HTTP which is like uh, uh, technically really easy to implement and uh, uh, handle. So you might want to avoid open, opening uh, HTTP or HTTPS ports. You may, uh, because for example, you want a certificate for your email server, which should pretty much in uh, should pretty much never have have any HTTP open. You might have a complex in infrastructure like uh, uh, load balancing that it's it gets gets pretty cumbersome to actually handle the uh, redirection uh, to the backends requesting the certificates in the case that you are not terminating TLS in the load balancer itself. And also the wildcard certificates. They won't be available through any other or the other uh, challenge method. So sounds good. What's the problem here? So you need automation. Anyway, uh, the certificate lifetimes are short, but this is by design, and it actually fixes some of the other underlying problems in the web PKI itself. Uh, limitations of software and providers pretty much means that uh, not all the DNS software or not all the DNS providers provide and nice or usable API to actually do this automatically. Uh, this is, uh, it's not, usually it's not possible to limit the privileges enough to make this uh, secure currently. Because most of the credentials actually allow access, access to whole DNS zone or in, well, worst case, a lot of different DNS zones. And uh, this of course applies to the TSIG uh, updates as well, because you will usually you would uh, whitelist an IP address and uh, give a key to the uh, clients who need to update the uh, records. So it's basically the same thing. So compromise of these DNS credentials pretty much leads to catastrophe. But there are solutions. Uh, first one, uh, there are a lot of different solutions, but I'm going, going through them one by one and uh, trying to explain the, uh, the problems in them or the good parts in them. So limited permissions. So let's say you have an option to limit the credentials to be only to be uh, able to update txt records the, that that's well pretty good uh, the possible malicious uh, user could not uh, take over your email like a uh, redirect email to themselves but what they can do they can uh, make sure that you won't deliver any email <laughs> outside of your server either by using ADSP, DMARC, DKIM, and most importantly, SPF, which uh, Nicholas Sarokari went through in his talk from a different perspective, though. Uh, but he showed the actual meaning of them. So um, there's only also zero configuration networking. And this also means that the attacker is able to 
uh, get certificates for all the subdomains. So, for example, doing the like a local man in the middle middle, middle attack, uh, hosting a rogue uh, hosting a rogue access point uh, that you connect and uh, terminate the D TLS and uh, get gets all the data. So yeah. But this pretty much means that you won't get man in the middle remotely, or everybody connecting to your domains won't, be, won't get man in the middle remotely. So, C names to the rescue. Uh, you can think of uh, C name records as a link or alias, which is it pretty much is. The DNS tells the client that uh, the uh, uh, droid you're, uh, this is not the droid you are looking for, but please check here. Uh, so you can point the C name for the magic subdomain for the validation, which was the underscore ACMATE dash challenge dot your domain dot TLD to whatever DNS name you want to use. Uh, for example, in a different zone uh, that has uh, DNS software that actually has an API that you can use. And this does not have to be the same zone. And uh, let's encrypt. Uh, we'll follow the chain of C names. So uh, the zone that the first C name points to might have another one, and so on. There is some like a limit, I think. But uh, yeah, this is the one of the bad ones as well. You can have a throwaway validation to domain. So let's say you have ten domain names. And you register this one throwaway domain name only for the actual like uh, certificate validation. Um, the anyone who compromises uh, those credentials by uh, will be able to get certificates for all the names that point to the that uh, DNS zone. Of course, if you want, you can register a throwaway validation domain for each domain you actually are going to use, but yeah, not very feasible. Yeah, oh, one, uh, one thing about these limited permissions still. Uh, uh, as far as uh, I, I know, uh, the only uh, provider or software that actually supports this is uh, ISP config, which is uh, uh, like uh, this control panel for uh, uh, server management. So yeah, um, next one uh, is uh, limited zone access. Uh, so you have a subdomain that you are able to actually uh, make, per uh, make, make credentials that have like uh, permissions to only those, not the entire zone, for example. Uh, and this will allow you to make uh, or automate it in a way that it, for each domain validation uh, required, it will create a new uh, subdomain that the C name will point to, and this will all be uh, controlled by their own credentials. <coughs> uh, feasible only with, um, with an actual validation, uh, actual automation, uh, and still pretty cumbersome. Uh, so, this is only supported by Microsoft Azure DNS, which is pre uh, pretty weird, because I, I wouldn't think the Microsoft Azure to be actually the only provider in the cloud infrastructure that actually has the uh, fine-grained permissions uh, for the DNS uh, zones. But turns out, this is how it is. Then uh, there is uh, this software I wrote uh, a bit over a year ago that is actually a limited DNS server itself. It provides an HTTP API that you can use to uh, update the validation records. and. Uh, requires a different software because 
uh, I want to limit uh, the limit the credentials to only to be able uh, to change the txt records in a certain subdomain. So this is pretty much uh, what the Azure does, but this is only for this exact purpose. Um, so how you use it is, is you um, point an uh, NS record. It's a uh, um, delegation apex uh, to this soft, uh, domain name that runs this uh, Acme DNS software. And uh, all the requests that go to the, or uh, all the requests to subdomains under that delegation AP apex will be uh, asked from this Acme DNS software. So you are able to have your own like uh, uh, custom records, but you are not able to update anything else than the actual randomly generated uh, subdomains through a remote API. Has uh, Cedar Mask whitelisting, so you can, when you re register your uh, account, which is like a one-way, uh, just one post request, you can, you can define which uh, IP address ranges, be it IPv4 or IPv6, are able to actually uh, make the update uh, requests to. It says autom automatic Let's Encrypt certificates for API. Since TLSS and I went down, that's not true anymore because uh, the software is written in Go, and this uses a uh, Go library called uh, AutoCerts, which used uh, TLSS and I previously. I will have to make a pull request, but have been quite busy since uh, Wednesday when the um, challenge method went, uh, went down. So it, it's also instantly available uh, for the like a bigger uh, traditional DNS software. Uh, there usually is uh, TTL. And uh, you, you will have to uh, wait for propagation uh, in addition to that. So. Uh, for for example, some cloud providers, the propagation is something between 30 seconds and a minute. So if you have a lot of domains, it's, it takes a lot of time to use these traditional uh, DNS APIs or DNS providers. So I'm going to go quickly through how this actually works. So. Uh, as I mentioned, it's a delegation Apex subdomain, which means that uh, you, for example, define that uh, auth.yourdomain.tld uh, will be running uh, the, this uh, Acme DNS software. So uh, you point an uh, NS record uh, this uh, A or AAA uh, record. Uh, this has only two endpoints for post data, register and update. Notice there's no, like, uh, forgot your password. It's th these uh, credentials are generated on random, and uh, it's no use to actually try to regain credentials because we expect uh, you to be able to control your main domain anyway. So if you lose your uh, credentials, you just create a new uh, new account or new uh, dynamic sub subdomain username and password combination and point your uh, CNM to it instead. So this, uh, in ad addition, yet uh, more decreases the attack surface there. And also you don't have to, or usually you don't even have any any point to open this HTTP API to the uh, public internet. This is usable for uh, like a larger, uh, more complex in infrastructure primarily. So this means that uh, your internal network is the only one, only network that actually has access to this. O only, only thing that needs to be uh, accessible from the public internet is the port uh, 50, Three, which is the DNS port, for the uh, obviously for the CA to request the uh, challenge uh, token. 
So how it works is the validation flow. First, you post a request to ACMADNS slash register. You get a uh, JSON structure with, uh, with your uh, like a randomly generated subdomain, uh, username, and a password. You can add a da data structure in JSON to the original register request that uh, ca with, with which you can set a whitelisting for the I IP addresses you want to use. So the update endpoint won't be available for, from any IP address outside of those that were whitelisted on the register time. Then uh, you point the C name uh, from the actual uh, sub uh, subdomain of the actual domain you want to get the certificate for uh, to this uh, Acmedian service, uh, service to the uh, randomly generated subdomain you just received in the register. And last thing there is left is only post the updates whenever uh, you're renewing your certificate. So this is the thing that you will pretty much automate. So the only thing that happens in the renewals in the future will be the number three post. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's a fire and forget in that sense. There's only one manual task, and that will be pointing the C name from the actual domain to this uh, ACME DNS. And it's, yeah, one time only. So I'll show you quickly how, it, how the requests look. So this is the register uh, request without uh, IP uh, limitations or whitelisting. So there you can see that uh, allow from, which would be the IP whitelist, whitelisting, is empty. Full doma domain is the actual full domain that uh, includes your uh, <coughs> your randomly generated subdomain, as well as the actual domain name of the uh, ACME DNS server. This makes it easy to use in automation uh, processes. There's also password and, and the randomly generated subdomain and the username, which is the triplet that you will need to use in any, every update request from here on. So. Um, the next thing is the update. As you can see, um, it's a post request to update end endpoint yet again with a few headers set, X API user and X API key, which are your username and password pretty much. And there's the data section, which is a, is a, is a JSON array uh, containing the subdomain you wish to uh, update and the txt record, which is uh, the uh, validation token from the CA. And uh, if it succeeds, you get a, get a 200 uh, response code OK, and the actual value you wish, wish to update there too. So then the only thing left is for the CA to actually query uh, your magic uh, subdomain which will be redirect from the, uh, from the actual domain using the CNAME to this ACME DNS service. And that's pretty much it. Uh, the future, I'm going to write, uh, do the binary re releases for this. Uh, it's written in Go, so it's pretty much like a uh, static link binary which, will be, which you will be able to run everywhere. I will have Docker images for uh, easy testing and uh, easy deployment as well. And I will write a Circle uh, plugin here. And uh, this pretty much means that uh, when you invoke CertBot, everything or any other ACME client with good enough uh, uh, plugin, uh, when you invoke the client, the only thing that you will be asked is please update this C name to your uh, main uh, DNS zone. And uh, pretty much clear string, you do that. And after that, it's automated. You can pretty much forget it. 
if the credential, if the box gets popped and your credentials get stolen, the, the only thing they are good for is uh, getting a certificate for this exact domain that the CNAME is, uh, was originally for. And um, takeaways. Um, be careful with your DNS zone credentials. Uh, that's somehow something that uh, people excited about the DNS challenge seem to forget. Um, for the red teamers out there, there might be a lot of uh, DNS credentials lying, like uh, with high privileges, lying all around uh, servers using DNS validation. But this really needs uh, all the to secure it, uh, you will need a lot of automation not to drive, drive users crazy. Because let's say you have these 10 domains, uh, so you would be doing this manually every 60 days, or well, the certificate lifetime was 90 days, so 60 to 90 days, pretty much. Uh, so you would manually go through all these 10 domains and uh, update the, their respective uh, DNS zones with the validation token to be able to uh, actually speak through HTTPS. So the only sufficient, uh, like complete mitigations of these problems are the Azure, uh, Microsoft Azure DNS, and this Acme DNS software, or anything like the Acme DNS software. Um, so all the other mitigations are like uh, limited because they have their downsides but you are able to choose yourself what kinds of, what kinds of risks are you willing to take and the last one uh, be like Microsoft Azure so if you provide any kind of uh, credentials make sure that they have the user has ability to limit the permissions as finely grained as feasible and um, that's pretty much it. Thank you. <laughs> this list, by the way, uh, is missing one really good URL, and that is the uh, blog post by the, by the guy who uh, found the TLS SNI problem. Uh, you will be find it on detectify.com. Um, let's see here. Oh, I don't have the URL bar there. Anyway, for, uh, check it out. Uh, Detectify.com uh, has this really good and uh, detailed blog post about the whole process. Uh, check it out. So uh, we have time for questions. I was really fast, it seems. So I actually have one question about the, the DNS server. Do yeah. you know if we can run that on IP addresses or only on IP legacy, the challenge? So will it work on a single stack toast? Because we don't have that many IP legacy, and it's, an, it's a colliding service. I can't run it on, a, on the other DNS server. Yeah, and by IP legacy, you mean IPv4, uh, IPv4 right? Yes, I, <laughs> I'm yes. supporting the RFC to rename IPv4 to IP legacy to shame everyone. <laughs> I like that. And the answer is yes, it works with IPv6. All, all of the features should work with IPv6, even the, the white listing, listing stuff. So, What it doesn't have is uh, DNSSEC currently, but that's debatable. Hi, like um, about the DNS uh, verification where you talk about some access to zone so and something that what's related to like Azure does something good as being a little bit Amazon Web Services fan. <laughs> I'm just wondering like could you use Route 53 because there you can limit access to like certain domain and you can have like like I am key and you only have access to certain 
subdomain and you and you can even delegate like sub subdomain to another account like using the ordinary delegation of subdomains okay so mm -hmm. the uh, I actually wasn't aware of that so mm -hmm. as you're mm -hmm. I can have a user account, uh, no, at, not this year, but root 56, which is uh, Amazon uh, DNS, uh, can have user credentials that are limited to a certain subdomain, right? Uh, yes. Well, one way of thinking is that uh, if you create another zone for the sub subdomain and you yeah. delegate with the NS records, do. So that's possible in Route, yeah. route 65. Oh, and uh, you can, can delegate the subdomain to different Amazon Web Services accounts. So you, yeah. you can have like a master account, which yeah, is yeah, care yeah. of the that does, that does exactly that, and that's feasible, and that's the right way to go. OK, yeah. so not the Azure is not the only right thing yeah. then. <laughs> yeah, OK, thanks, thanks for that. Uh, I wasn't actually aware of that. Uh, but in that case, uh, just like with Azure, you, would, you will need automation because to limit uh, the possible attack surface to only this one uh, domain uh, that you have the have to provide the validation for you would need like a one one subdomain delegation AP, apex per uh, subdomain to limit limit the possible uh, attack surface to only that uh, certificate of that subdomain so Uh, thanks for the, um, uh, you know, for the great talk. Just trying to think that uh, where does uh, DNS of a HTTPS? Uh, sorry, does can you? Play? Uh, where does uh, DNS of a HTTPS play into the whole scenario? Like with the do, the new, uh, is it in IETF that there's a new proposed standard that we can be able to, to basically encrypt uh, of to have DNS queries of our HTTPS, where will it pay, play in, in, in this case? So um, I didn't quite get the question, but there is a, an RFC uh, to uh, DNS over HTTPS, which is a really good one. Uh, something because uh, that's not the whoever, like a man in, in the middle, so you won't be able to see which uh, domains you are requesting. Yeah. and. Uh, but for the question, I think, did you mean that is, are you able to use the uh, DNS over HTTPS to actually make uh, with the CA? Absolutely. Yeah. No, you can't. Uh, Let's Encrypt currently only resolves the current, uh, like a traditional DNS uh, records. So unfortunately, not yet, at least. So I think that's, that was all the questions. So thank you a lot.